Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is time, week number two, and for the first time um, on Metro Prime Time, we have the San Francisco 49ers and Darius Whitlow taking on the LA Chargers. Now, the LA Chargers hold a 0 in 3 record on Metro Prime Time, and basically, a Metro Prime Time game is just any time we tune into a game that's in the regular season. So, playoffs don't count towards the Metro Prime Time record. I will be keeping that stat for you guys. Um, so yeah, Chargers looking for the first Metro Prime Time win, and 49ers as well. Welcome to the to the show, man. Hopefully, they can put on a show. Now they are very injured coming into this week, so hopefully, Chargers can take advantage of that. If the Chargers are smart, they're going to run it down their throats because that defensive line for the 49ers is very, very hurt. So, starting off in the action, the 49ers would get the ball first. Darius Whitlow, Zach Keister, it's a battle of the subscriber power back running backs. We'll see which one's the best power back. Also got to talk about um, Deontay Rose on the, uh, the Chargers defense and, of course, that new subscriber keister i want to say they're they're obviously brothers right the little bro big bro i don't know right either way who do we have winning this game i mean it's gonna be a close game i i think um i don't know i think i got the chargers even though they have one on metro prime time i have them winning just because the 49ers man they are they're ruffle you know with injuries right now and i think Zach Keister means business um, this year. You know what I mean? Um, this is his contract year since the renegotiation of a, to a two-year contract. So this is his contract year. That means he's got to come like he's never come before. Like he's going to have to pause. I don't know why I said it like that. But <laughs> he's got to bring it to the table. So wait, bro. I'm, I'm running low on hours, guys. If the commentary is whack, man, I'm, I'm so sorry, man. I'm going to try and do the best I can here on like little bit of sleep. I don't have a lot, you know, I'm not getting a lot of sleep here lately. But right off the rip, uh, pressure gets to Joey Boza, and the 49ers are not going to do much. Not going to do much there. Uh, they will pin the Chargers back deep with an amazing punt. Set up the Chargers at their own four-yard line. Can they get out of this hole? Hand off to Zach Keister. I like the call, and he's going to get stuffed. But actually, four yards gained there. You'll take that in this situation. Um, next play, another hand off Zach Keister. He's gonna. Oh my God! He's gonna do him like that. He's gonna do him like that. Keister is known for his power. He's known for running people over, but he's not known for breaking ankles. And he just broke that man's ankles. Oh my goodness. That was. I feel bad for the guy. Um, I. Yeah. Okay. The Chargers. Now, I just want you guys to know. In if you missed the off season. The Chargers have a new offensive coordinator and a new defensive coordinator. And you can kind of tell, man, they're calling the plays a little bit different. They look like a run-heavy team right off the rip here as Justin Herbert bombs it down uh, 28 yards as I say that. And then they're going to follow it up with a 5 wide here. So they're going to make me look a little silly. But, I mean, I would like to, to think, you know, new offensive coordinator. Oh, look that. There's a run. New offensive coordinator, new Chargers, right? New, they fired their, their defensive coordinator and their offensive coordinator. They keep the head coach the same. But I like the moves in L.A. for the Chargers trying to grow um, this team. They have a dominating roster. Guy wide open and inside the red zone go the Chargers. I mean, they have the, the, the squad. So clearly the issue is with, with, with the coaching, right? They have the roster. There's no reason they should should be losing, and they made that move um, this offseason as Keister's going to fight there and get stuffed two yards. But, yeah, they addressed it. They said, hey, we know. We think it's coaching, and we're going to make those moves to, to change. We don't want to lose this window. We feel like we can win Super Bowls. We want to make that move now. So, you know, one second, eight, handoff. Keister stays up. He continues to stay up as he throws Fred Warner, one of the best middle linebackers in the league, off of him with one arm like it was nothing. Oh, man. He says, watch out, Daniel Zim. Last year was your year, but I'm coming for you. I'm running it up the middle. Keister, this is what you got to look forward to, Zimmer, as he spins and wiggles his way just at one yard short of the touchdown. Okay, let's take a look at these last two runs here. First off, what just happened here. Nice little spin move. I like to see Keister. He, he looks more fluent. He looks more relaxed and comfortable. He, he's loose. 
and that, that can be good. And then this play here shows the muscle. First, stays alive. Then he says, get off of me. Drink some milk, you little hoe. And then gets brought down. But he's shown that he has strength. And he's shown that he has the wiggles. He's loose. And there he is into the end zone. Now for the first time this year. Uh, I think that's his third rushing touchdown of the year now. So he's off to a very fantastic start. And the Chargers are up 7-0 to over the 49ers. Now, later in the game, a 49ers going to not really do much. Give the ball right back to the Chargers here. Kind of in the middle, five minutes and some change left in the second. Chargers going to drive down the field. Can they finish it? First and goal. Yes, they can, thanks to that 25-yard reception to Keister. Then sets him up. Myers gets into the end zone. And now it's 14-0. to zero. And uh, now the 49ers are in a, in a pretty dangerous spot. You want to try and score before halftime? And uh, try and see what you can do. And that's exactly what they're going to do. One minute left. Trying to get some points on the board before half. Going to dump this one away. Um, as the pressure's coming. Trey Lance. You see him right there. Second and ten. Not having the best day. Not having the worst either though. He's a superstar dev. I just noticed that by the way. He's going to dump it down. Dangerous pass to Devo Samuel. Gets cracked but holds on to it. That was a dangerous pass. But hey he fit it right in. And uh... Trying to, to even out the scoreboard here. 53 seconds left. One timeout. What are they going to do? Trey Lance is going to step back. Has time. Dumps it down and steps out of bounds. Deontay Rose in the area right there. There's Keister dapping up his best friend, Justin Herbert. And uh, not much of the other Keister we've seen today. I'm not even sure if he's got the starting spot or not. I would assume he's going to get some snaps, though, because he's a tight end. And I do know for a fact he's at least at number two. And now it's Darius Whitlow who doesn't get in. He got stuffed. Third and goal. If you're the 49ers, man, you need a touchdown right here. Man in motion. That's George Kittle. Trey Lance handoff. Whitlow he is going to have enough, and he's going to dance on him. He says, anything you can do, I can do better, Keister. I'm here to stay, and I'm, I'm the best power back that this league has seen, that the MFL has ever seen. Now, stats at halftime, Justin Herbert can't do better. He literally can't do better. Zach Keister, close to being not doing better. Now, Darius Whitlow, oh my goodness, 12 carries, 16 yards. I'm trying not to laugh when I read that. Poor guy. Not looking too good at sitting next to Zach Keister as far as stats go. He does have a rushing touchdown at least. Now, later in the game, 49ers back in position. To tie this game up. We have us a game though. And there's Darius Whitlow once again getting stuffed, man. Second and ten now. What can they do here? Shotgun formation. Trey Lance. Gonna step back. Has time. And he gets crushed as he throws it away. So third and ten for the 49ers. See what they can do here. You want to at least get three out of this if you can. Trey Lance stepping back. Has time. Dumps it down. And he did hold on to it. But it's going to be well short, obviously. And they're going to settle for a field goal. As that was Derwin James with the tackle. His fourth on the day. And this is a pretty important kick. Set it up 10-14. to 14 And uh, play some defense. You're back right here in this game. And it's up and no good. Oh my god. Well, there it is. Later in the game, Chargers put up a field goal. 17-7. to uh, Six minutes left in the fourth. Chargers in the red zone for the first time since we've seen them last, obviously. And um, they're looking to try and put this one away. I mean, that, that missed field goal really hurt San Francisco. And as I hand off to Keister, had a hole. Tries to cut it up. But Fred Warner was there to stop him. So Chargers will settle for a field goal here more, more than likely. Um, I would assume there's no reason to really go for it here. And uh, that's exactly what it is. So kick a field goal here. Go up 20-7. to seven, Get in, get out. This will be the first time the Chargers win in Metro Primetime. As long as they can hold it here and not screw anything up. The 49ers driving down the field. What can they do? Four yards away after that big 25-yard bomb to Preston Williams, the free agent pickup. He played his whole career out in Miami. 
But now he's out here in San Francisco trying to make a name for himself. First and goal, Trey Lance. Pressure coming. Panicking. He's going to... Oh, nice awareness to get out of there without getting sacked. Throws it away. Third and goal, though. Trey Lance steps inside to the pocket. Pressure's coming, though. In. Oh, he rips one off, but not going to be able to do it for the second one. Joey Boza was there initially. And then it's Tillery, I think, that finished him off. All they got to do is pick up a first down and leave it up to Zach Keister on third two. That's the man you want to hit. Okay, they give it to Austin Eckler, but Keister did that for the most part. Um, the first two rushes there. And there it is. The Chargers, for the first time of us watching them in this series, they finally win. They win. They move now to 1-1. One one. They were 0-1. They lost our opener. And it's Zach Keister kind of carrying the team on his back to get the win. Now, Herbert, I'm not going to say he carried his team because Herbert did fantastic. Like... He was 10 for 10 at halftime. He, he played phenomenal. Uh, honestly, the Chargers defense played just as well. Honestly, the whole team for the Chargers looked freaking great. I mean, they only gave up a touchdown. So, the whole team looked fantastic. I think the offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator might have been the move. Also, if you guys didn't know, Richard Sherman was picked up by the Chargers in free agency. And so, he's out there. That'll help that secondary out. Get a veteran out there, I guess. Um, but as far as the results go around the league... Here they are. Um, some upsets, I would say, and some, like, one of my, this is an upset to me. The, the Ravens losing to Pittsburgh. The Ravens moved to 0-2. James Skaggs looks like to be one of the best quarterbacks in the league. He is now currently leading the in, in MFL with passing yards. Coming off of his rookie year last year, he has five tutties on the year. Clayton DeBush only got one reception there. What's happening to Baltimore? I'm, I'm not too sure. They're 0-2, though. I know that. And what about KC, man? Like, 40-28. to 28. Like, oh, my God, dude. That's insane. Like, Edwards Alaire had 100 yards. Uh, Percy Peoples, a rookie running back. I'm really excited for this guy. Um, he did end, uh, end up getting hurt, unfortunately. It's nothing too serious. He'll be out next week, and that's it. But he had three rushes only. But he got 93 yards. Give that man a, more more carries. Uh, rookie free safety, Greenwood, which I'm excited for KC. He, he had him a, a, a bunch of tackles and interception. Now, Caleb Goins, he's finally listed the number one. 25 carries, 120 yards, one tutty. Caleb Goins looks like to be the real deal. I'm excited to watch him. And finally, my boy, right here. You should know who he is. Wide receiver. Gregory we are going to be watching this guy next um, he's finally getting a start out there in Green Bay and he's matter of fact let's just look here both the wins that they're coming off of he had a huge impact in both getting six receptions so close to last week obviously this week to get a hundred yards I can't wait to watch him and the Green Bay Packers I hope you guys are excited for that one let me know what you think uh, here's the stats we're gonna be watching them take on the Jets so, I'm, I'm excited. This is more for Jordan Gregory to make his debut. That's the biggest reason why we're watching them next. Hope you guys enjoy the next episode. Hope you enjoyed this one. You guys already know the drill, man. I'll see you on the next one. Peace.